Hey everyone, I'm so excited to connect with you again. Welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding You, Empowered Healing for Divorced Women. I'm your host, Christina, and I'm really excited to be here with you today. We've got a really great topic all around falling back in love with the most important person out of all of this situation of divorce, you and some practical tips and things that you can do to start implementing and making small, subtle shifts in your life today. And so I wanted to invite you, before we jump in and get started, um, I wanted to invite you to sign up for the newsletter, become a part of the Her Heart Heals Insider Group. You'll get empowered thoughts and messages things that we kind of dive deeper in further beyond the podcast episodes to your inbox every week connecting with me. There's a link in the show notes for you to join. It's absolutely free. So if it's something where you're looking to dive a little bit deeper on your healing journey, click on the link. Let's connect. And again, it's absolutely free and it'll just give us a chance to go deeper. Um, I also wanted to encourage you, if you find this episode or if you've been listening to the podcast on other episodes, if you find it helpful, I would really, really appreciate if you left a review, um, if you are able to rate the podcast, if you were able to get some value out of this, a five-star rating would mean just the absolute world to me. Uh, I do put a lot of effort and thought into putting these podcasts together for you. And so just to get your feedback on that would just mean the absolute world. And if at all during the podcast, uh, or if you're watching the video, if at all any of this information resonates with you, or if you get an aha moment, or you have even just a subtle shift that maybe makes sense, there's a new perspective that's brought to you, tag me. I would love to celebrate your journey as you evolve, as we grow together. So feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'm at Her Heart Heals on Instagram, and I would just love to hear from you. So without further ado, we can go ahead and jump into the podcast. You're listening to Her Heart Heals Divorce Radio. Hi. I'm Christina Cuevas. Seven years ago, I went through a divorce and it completely turned my world upside down. And I'm so glad it did. I documented my healing to share information with other women going through their own divorce journey. And now, with thousands of downloads around the world from divorced women just like you, I'm here to show you how to ditch the shame around divorce and finally heal so that you can regain the confidence to create your most abundant and joyful future. I'm so glad you're here. This is Her Heart Heals Divorce Radio. So here we go. Let's just kick it off by reintroducing the topic for today, which is falling back in love with yourself, really wanting to build a solid foundation and developing the relationship with ourselves is the absolute fundamental first thing when it comes to being able to confidently move on and heal from divorce. And oftentimes like the focus can stay on the other person as we go through a divorce, or we can have so much shame around our divorce that we can't even stand to face ourselves. And I definitely know that feeling firsthand. You know, we're typically the last ones to think that we need nourishment. It could also mean that you're divorced and it's so overwhelming to even just feel like you're above water, that we're also the last person as far as, you know, neglecting to take care of ourselves, neglecting to acknowledge our feelings, very much in that survival mode and not wanting to take care of ourselves. But it's really in those times that we need to show up for ourselves There is no one else there that can provide that comfort, especially because divorce is so such a lonely journey. And we oftentimes just feel 
misunderstood, really alone. And who knows us better? Who knows this journey? Who knows this walk better than us? And so I just want to start encouraging you to shift your perspective on what it means to fall back in love with yourself. And so I'm going to highlight some items that may be a little bit of like an, oh crap, I totally have been doing this. And it's going to kind of spark a reaction. And I want you to be able to be open enough to explore that a little bit more. Usually if there's a reaction that you get off of something that I'm saying, it is an invitation to go deeper and really explore that. Falling back in love with yourself also requires building that confidence. And so if it's something that you've been working on, building your confidence in other areas, whether that meet be inflating your ego a little bit, stroking your ego a little bit, trying to do other things that mask dealing with the feelings. This episode is for you. So I want to talk a little bit about numbing and avoiding being with ourselves. A lot of times you see it on TV where a girl goes through a breakup and her friends rally around her, try to get her out of the house, try to distract her. Maybe you go out drinking. Maybe you go out dancing. Maybe you go and you're trying to seek attention outside of yourself. And while that's super lovely and awesome to have friends that care enough about you, that's not always the best answer of what we need in that moment. Going through divorce can make someone feel so isolated, even if you're in a room full of people. And I can't think of the song that says that, but it's, you know, we've never felt more lonely than being in a room full of people. And so while our friends mean well, you know what's best for you. You know, ultimately, that It's a great distraction, but it needs to be looked at as that. Truly, it is just a distraction from something that's outside of you. It's not going to bring you closer to yourself. It's not going to help you heal the relationship with yourself. It's not going to change how you talk to yourself. It's not going to change how you look at yourself. It truly is numbing and distracting. And so, The reason why we often feel so isolated is because the answers we seek cannot be found outside in things or in people or in experiences outside of us. And sometimes people spend years or decades searching for answers that were within themselves all along. And the truth is, Everything that we're meant to know is already within us. How refreshing is that, though? It's such a huge sigh of relief, isn't it? It's already within us. All of the answers that we are ever going to come to discover in our life ultimately just are within us right now. It's the life experiences and the things that we go through that uncover, that help us evolve and shed certain layers and help us soften in certain areas that will expose answers that are deep within ourselves. And so during this episode, I'm going to show you how you can start falling back in love with yourself, how you can soften more and lean into the things that we have with inside of us and maybe help to start get you some of those answers that you've been seeking. We have to heal the relationship with ourselves after divorce. As I mentioned earlier, shaming ourselves or wanting to numb just pushes out those versions of us that need healing. People have asked me before, like, how do I know if I'm ready to date? 
And I always say you're ready to date when you're 100% okay with being alone and you could have a blast by yourself. It's not until you can fully love yourself that you can fully allow someone else to love you too. So to begin, I want to encourage you to start to notice the self-talk. How are you narrating things in your head to yourself? You can also start this practice by paying attention to when you look at yourself in the mirror. When you pass by a mirror, do you avoid it? What are your first thoughts that you get when you look at yourself in the mirror? Begin to notice these things. And this is all about no judgment, right? It's about retraining our mind to refrain from the judgment. So don't judge yourself for being judgmental. Just observe. Just observe. Don't judge yourself. But the results may shock you. I know because they shocked me. This is something that I have recently been trying to be more diligent about putting into practice. It's like a muscle. You got to kind of keep working at it. And if you fall off the wagon, you get back up. But it's something that you really have to begin to cultivate day by day. And so if that is even something that's overwhelming, just reel it back in and just start with the observing part. So this is something I've had to put into practice every day. When something doesn't go your way, when you drop something and it spills all over the floor, what do you say to yourself? Like, oh, I'm such a klutz. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I did that. When you make a mistake in front of other people, what do you say to others? I hear people say things, and I used to say this as well, and I've learned to kind of change how I talk about myself to other people and myself. But it's like, oh, please forgive me. I'm I'm being dumb today, or, you know, I'm this today. And, and how do we talk about ourselves to other people? My gosh, how do we talk about ourselves to ourselves? So when you begin to start to realize your your self-talk throughout the day, and then in those instances where something happens where things didn't go your way or you made a mistake or there was an accident and maybe, you know, you accidentally caused that or something happens, pay attention to how you talk about yourself to others, to yourself. That's huge. Those things add up big time, especially as your day goes on. Your voice is the constant loop playing. And this is what you're feeding yourself. They already say that, you know, the more we scroll on social media, the more we scroll on our phone, the more we watch TV, we're subconsciously being influenced. You know, they talk about labels and marketing ad agencies that spend millions of dollars to try to get in our own head to try to influence certain decisions that we make. We do that all by ourselves when it comes to the image and the relationship that we have with ourselves. We don't need a marketing agency. We got that constant loop playing about how we talk about ourselves how we feel about ourselves. And that is really those small seeds that are being planted that ultimately affect our ability to move forward, our ability to evolve, our ability to be confident with ourselves, with our choices, with other people. So once you begin to take notice and you get to choose what you would like to say to yourself instead, You can ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? Even better, asking it in the third person. When you say, what do you need in this moment? How can I be there for her? So I find it's really helpful to begin referring to yourself in the third person because you would never talk to your best girlfriend the way that you are probably talking to yourself right now. 
So to begin to cultivate a relationship with yourself, sometimes it's easier to refer to yourself in the third person so that you can acknowledge that there is this other person that needs care. And if you want to even go further, that person is the person that you are in your head is not the same person that you are in your heart. A lot of times it's two different wavelengths. Our head is trying to talk our heart out of how it feels all day long. And so we really need to connect that. That's the relationship that we need to build, that we need to strengthen, that we need to nurture. Beyonce said it best, me, myself, and I, three people. So definitely, if you're having a hard time even taking those first steps, try to refer to yourself in the third person. One thing I like to do as well is keep a few photos of me at different ages. And for me, it's best to just keep it in my phone. And as I scroll through them, I remember that version of me and I get to talk to her and tell her that it's going to be okay. And I talk to her like a big sis. So I know that there are people who print out or like will have some baby photos that they keep and you can put it up on your mirror in your bathroom and it could be just the version of yourself, a period of time that you really needed care and nurturing. So find a photo of yourself, screenshot it, Keep it as your screensaver image on your phone, put it in your bathroom, put it in your car, and just start talking to her. What does she need? She lives within you all day. She is part of the version of you that lives in your heart. She is the wounded little girl that lives inside of you that is begging to be held, begging to be seen, begging to be validated. None of that can come from anything outside. It has to just come from within you. And so replacing the tone and the things that we say builds our self-esteem. And that energy begins to also form in a positive manner and it goes outward. That now becomes what we exude, what we demonstrate to other people, that whole something about her, something about her. She's just always so positive. Something about her. She is just such a light. She's such a light beam. Have you ever encountered people where you just, you meet them and they just have something about them? That makes you feel safe. It makes you feel nurtured. It makes you feel loved. That energy has to cultivate from within us and then it goes outward. And the beautiful thing is that also becomes what we get back. So our environment can change just from cultivating that relationship with ourselves. And then we can begin to implement things like boundaries with other people. It makes it easier to say no to things because your voice is now a representation of the part of you that you have a relationship with. The little girl that lives inside of you, you have her back. That relationship now becomes the relationship that you hold up on a pedestal, that you covet, that you make a commitment to that you are going to be there for her. You get to ask her, is doing this activity in your best interest, yes or no? Does this make you feel safe? Do you feel like going out tonight? If it's a no, it's a no. Sorry, I can't. You know, the inner version of me says, no, I can't. You know, we have all these other relationships that we place as a priority that are with other people that we will maybe overextend ourselves because that relationship is so important to us. We now get to say, 
this relationship that I have with myself becomes first. And it's so important because even after a divorce, when you're in a marriage, we sacrifice so much of the relationship with ourselves to better the relationship with our partner in that marriage. And so I realize in divorce, you know, we can feel so broken. We're so wounded. The girl that's inside us, the woman inside us that is wounded and hurting needs us. So once we begin to do that and we say no to things and we set boundaries with others, it makes it a whole lot easier to take a stand as well for decision making and in turn boost your confidence. And this is why I really push doing the work on the relationship with yourself because when we go through divorce, not only are we trying to figure out who we are as individuals, but the guilt and the shame that can come with it make us feel like we would do anything to not be who we are. We're so ashamed that we had a marriage that failed. We don't want anything, any part of it. And that's really the furthest from the truth. We have to be able to nurture ourselves. Another thing that you can do is begin to sing all of your favorite love songs to yourself. It's really about romanticizing you. Take yourself out to dinner, put on some makeup, be the partner that you have always wanted. Tell yourself sweet things, compliments, cherish you. Prioritize your self-care, but be intentional about it. Get excited about it. If you met the person of your dreams and they were taking you out on a date next Friday, you would put that on your calendar. You would be counting down the days. You would be envisioning how well it was about to go, getting swept off of your feet, all of the romantic things that you would be doing, how you would be feeling. You would have fun getting ready. That is the kind of excitement that you should be creating for yourself. And hopefully you can start to see how developing this relationship with yourself and building that confidence first and foremost, falling in love with yourself, romanticizing yourself, sets the bar. It really sets the bar. And hopefully I've pled my case as well on making this be a priority and being able to be 100% okay with being alone and spending time alone before you get into another relationship because no one will ever fill up your cup like you can. I want to say something else too, and we'll close with this because once we start to cultivate that relationship and we get to remember things about ourselves, we get to have this relationship with ourselves, we set the bar. If we're jumping into a relationship or we're not working on the relationship with ourselves, we're still wounded. We become codependent on other people. We become dependent on outside factors, substances, food, you know, whatever. But when we learn to fill up our own cup, then that is the new standard for when other people enter into relationship with us and when we choose to enter into relationship with them. Like, how would we even be able to have the expectations of other people, of how other people treat us, of what we expect in a new relationship whenever you're ready for that? If we don't first know how to give that to ourselves and the feeling, you know, feeling worthy of that, we don't just get swept off of our feet. If we don't first know what that's like, and we can only really give that to ourselves, you have to know where your standards are at before you'll know how to set those expectations and really make a decision, a conscious decision 
of, you know, oh, those people know how to, you know, treat me the way that I want to be treated. It's been a lot. This conversation is really juicy and all about falling back in love with yourself. And I really hope that this information was helpful for you. I hope that you will be able to implement some of these actions. If you be- even just begin to take notice of the dialogue, of the conversation that you have with yourself, and hopefully you get to, you know, romanticize yourself. If you start implementing any of these things, remember, I would love to hear about it. Please share. Feel free to DM me on Instagram at Her Heart Heals. You can also email me, Christina at HerHeartHeals.com. And let's chat. But make the choice. At least just be open to hearing and seeing and reflecting some of these dialogues that you've had with yourself. and begin to start to make decisions for the version of you that's inside that needs you the most. I'm rooting for you. And until we meet again, this was really fun. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Want to learn more? I'm going to add a link in the show notes to the website, herheartheals.com. And there you can access all of my helpful tips, the blogs on there, and schedule a session with me. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to connect. You can follow me and my handle is at herheartheals. Hope to connect with you soon.